Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. After a long hiatus, we have the editor of Financial Express, Sunil Jain, back with us. Sunil, welcome to P Guru's channel. Lovely to be back again, Yashri. So, Sunil, um, a lot of stuff has been happening in the last few days. A 20 lakh crore package has been announced. The finance minister has been holding press conferences back to back. I think five days, and a little bit of thing like salami tack, you know, slices came out and. Uh, I guess the big picture is 20 lakh crores sounds like a big number. Could you please help our viewers understand how this 20 lakh number came up? I think there was even 21 lakh crore. Yeah, how this thing, yeah. right? So, so the most important thing I want to kind of make sure that uh, viewers understand is viewers are expecting a cash straight directly into your bank account. Yeah. I don't Absolutely. think that is happening, is it? You know, I mean, if you look at what happened in America and countries like that, it's been, you know, straightforward cash being put into, you know, companies and, you know, individuals and things like that. Right. You know, I think expecting that to happen in India was always asking for too much because, you know, for 50 years, I mean, for God knows how many years, maybe 50, 60, certainly the last 20, 30 years, we have been very profligate. So we've never, ever saved for a rainy day. Even, you know, at the times, for example, when the economy was growing at 9%, Partly during the Vajpayee years, one or two years, part, you know, not five years of the UPA, we never ever reduced our fiscal deficit to get a surplus. So today, when we were confronted with this with this horrible problem that we have, we were running between the central government, the state government, and the PSUs, what is called the public sector borrowing requirement, right. about 11 percent of GDP. Now that 11 percent of GDP will go up to about 14 or 15 hmm. because of the collapse in central government taxes and state government taxes. So can you imagine a, a country which is running a 15% or a 14% deficit? I mean, it is asking to be downgraded. Then, you know, right now between the center and the state, we have a seven, our, def, our debt is 70% of GDP. Now, this year itself, I think it will go up to about 75, seven, maybe 78%. Again, that's asking for trouble. So, you know, in a situation like this, for anybody to expect that there would be, you know, cash going out, I think you were really asking for the moon. I mean, we do need cash to go out. I'm not saying that we don't need cash to go out because you have a serious demand problem. But I'm just saying it is not possible to give cash because the government is just too broke. So what they've done, you know, in that thing, if you look at this 21 lakh crores, roughly one tenth, roughly about, you know, 1.8 or maybe 2 lakh crores out of this, one tenth of this is actually, you know, money going out of the government's budget. The rest is, you know, about 8 lakh crores or so is liquidity provided by the RBI. Uh, about 1 lakh crores is, is loans to be given to the to the SEBs by, you know, two central uh, institutions called the PFC and the REC. 3 lakh crores is supposed to be given by the banks to MSMEs, which is going to be guaranteed by the government. So, you know, so essentially it, it's measures like that, which have made, so it's really to answer your, your initial question. You're really looking at tackling the supply side. There is very little demand side. Now, is that a perfect situation? No, it is not. Will that aggravate the slowdown in uh, in 2022? I mean, uh, for you, calendar 21 for us, FY22. Uh, it could, you know, frankly, there is no uh, easy answer one way or the other. The government has done one, one thing, but you could argue that if they haven't given a direct stimulus of a greater amount, you can actually aggravate the slowdown. Even that is possible. I mean, frankly, a lot depends now on West, whether, you know, Mr. Modi is able to simplify things, you know, See, essentially, that's the problem in India. And this is something that the Prime Minister promised. He's been promising for the last six years. He's done very little of it so far. But we live in hope. Uh, so, you know, he promised a series of reform which would make life easier for people. It still wouldn't fix your demand side problem. But if, for example, a company found it easier to set up business in India, if right. a company found it easier to carry on business, then presumably they would go ahead. You see, because one thing that... Uh, the government has done, which very few people have actually paid attention to, is, you know, the argument is or the belief is that nothing has been done for the larger companies and things like that. That's not strictly true. So what they've done is, for example, we had an insolvency code. So if you didn't, uh, you know, uh, pay your loans within a certain period of time, you were taken to the insolvency court. So that has been stayed for the next one year. Then the government has said that we reserve the right for ourselves. So we haven't seen it yet, but they, they put in a proviso saying, we reserve the right to treat 
COVID debt as not a default. Now we don't know what COVID debt is. Hmm. Uh, it is this is a definition we will get to know over a period of time. Right. And I think sooner rather than later. But it's possible, for example, a loan which somebody took, uh, you know, or takes, you know, three months in the next three months, or took in the last three months. Uh, if he doesn't pay that, that will not be considered a COVID default. I don't know. I mean, it's possible. But I'll tell you one thing. I expect there they will be more packages. They have to be. Because, you know, uh, we, we've published one restaurant guy saying that 80% of restaurants in India will close down. I think that's a bit excessive. I certainly think, you know, 20 to 30% of restaurants will shut down. You know, tourist, uh, you know, businesses will shut down. The aviation sector, in any case, is in deep trouble. So, frankly, the government has a choice. It can either, you know, not do anything right now. And six months later, when these guys go bankrupt, uh, then it pays the bill to the banks, uh, you know, the PSU bank. So it can pay the bill then or it can pay the bill now. I suspect that there will have to be a, there will have to be one or two more packages. I don't think this is the end, but this is the end of I would what I would say is phase one. Now, um, Sunil, so you said that substantial amount of this money is directed towards supply side. And I can understand that, you know, first you have to create like essential food items and essential commodities. You think of it that way. Uh, and, and even it could be as simple as, you know, slippers, umbrellas, books and what have you, because, you know, by June schools are going to start and so on and so forth. <clears throat> but what is the plan for the government to kickstart the demand side? That's one thing. There is no, there is no plan to kick side the, to kickstart the demand side because the government is too broke to do that. That's mm -hmm. the point I make. They do need to kick, kick start the demand side. There is no doubt about it. But I'm just saying the government is too broke to do it. So you know, it's one of the. So I think that what's going to happen is we're going to pretty much write off this year. Yes. In terms of growth, I mean, you know, we'll have you know maybe in, even in terms of nominal GDP, you may have a six seven percent contraction. So I think the the issue is really that you know we hope that. The supply side, you know, gets back. There's a, there's a pent up demand of the last three months, so some of that will start coming back. Once factories start working again, there'll be you know there'll be money back in the hands of of people. So you know you're expecting a slow revival. Uh, so there is there is no fast revival plan that the government has in mind at all because it knows that it just cannot do that. So you know, sorry, if I can just. You know, uh, if you go by the number, the you know the finance minister put out, she said there were eight crore migrant workers, and I'd say on an average, these guys were earning about let's say four hundred rupees a day. Right now, so that twelve thousand rupees a month. So twelve thousand rupees a month into eight crore is almost a lakh crore a month. Is what right. they're losing when they don't have jobs. Right now, there is no way that the government can afford to give one lakh crore rupees to people, that, and there's just eight crore people by the way. There's a lot. You know, we have a workforce of 45 crore. So there's no way that the government can possibly hope to make up that the money which people are losing by the factories shutting down, which is why, you know, in fact, yesterday, the government, we actually announced what is called lockdown four. And the thing about lockdown four is that while we're still very scared about the coronavirus and stuff like that, there's been considerable relaxation in what is considered a red zone. So for example, in the past, the entire city of Delhi or the state of Delhi was considered a red zone. Right. Uh, whereas there only be, there be certain, you know, apartment pockets. complex, yeah. certain, you know, pockets of Delhi, which have the, you know, which have the Corona. So what the central government has now said is that the state government decides what little zone to call, a, you know, a red zone. So it could be, for example, you know, some, some apartment complex in Mayur Vihar. It could be, you know, 10, uh, 10, 10 areas in South Extension. You know, it could be things like that. But the entire Delhi is not going to be considered a, uh, you know, a red zone. But I think, you know, states are going to be very cautious. Like, for example, in Bombay, uh, we've seen that Bombay is, you know, rapidly running out of uh, beds. Right. So, you know, the stuff that we heard in Italy of people, you know, uh, basically, uh, you know, of, of the hospital authorities having to decide who they would give the ventilator to a young person or an old person. We are sort of reaching that level in Bombay. We already heard of three or four deaths of people who've gone from hospital to hospital and turned away, been turned away. So now, in fact, the, the you know the government there is planning to take over private hospitals. They are converting stadiums into containment centers and ICUs and stuff like that. They've even relaxed the terms of you know of so for example, earlier it was very clear that if you had corona, you went into a hospital or a you know a quarantine facility. 
now they're saying for mild cases we can do it at home so you know there is a lot of that happening i mean i think we're really struggling to get our heads around corona so you know i mean this is actually a horrible place to be in because this is not a financial problem this is not a you know it's not a supply side problem it's a fact that we just so scared to get out of the house we don't know who's going to get corona well um sunil a um, couple of observations one is uh, i've been reading some feedback over whatsapp you know back of the envelope calculations for people people are saying that their expenses have halved by by 50% now they've come down by 50% that's great except their income has come down by 100% yeah absolutely right no, so the only hope is to get things back on track right right so so the income part needs to kick start and you know you said something about downgrading india's ratings you know this might be an unusual case i'm not sure moody's uh, is going to or standards and poor standard and poor is going to apply the same kind of yardstick i mean if you look at us right we have already put in 6 trillion another 3 trillion has just been passed by the house and senate is looking at it there will be some arm wrestling again you will have another one so 9 trillion us is a 20 trillion economy so you are almost talking about 50% of the gdp being now uh, you know put back into the system and and here is the thing those companies who are having a payroll for them the government is giving um, loans for 2.5 months at 1% interest so just think about it so if if there if your payroll is say $10000 they are giving $35000 and they are saying paid back at 1% <clears throat> with also a caveat the 35000 we give you if you are going to do it entirely to pay down uh, payroll then that money you don't have to return but if i use it for something else for example like for uh, you know to pay rent or to pay some other expense then they you have to pay that back so that is how the government is looking at it there is a small wrinkle in this over 30 million individuals in the united states today are self employed our marketing is done by amazon or hc or xyz walmart.com so essentially what it is is you think you have something unique even a software company now uses amazon web services there's an aws portal where you can sell software and amazon tries to connect up the buyer and the seller because they have such a vast user base they know who is looking for this so they can immediately connect it so your expense of running a marketing campaign a sales campaign those things go down and and amazon picks up that for a small fee good thing is that you only pay when you sell so yeah. you know there there is that plus so but the problem with yeah but the problem for these 30 million odd people is that they don't have a normal source of income they are not paying themselves every month they are making money over whatever it is their sales their returns and then they have to put some money to you know invest in the next uh, inventory and so on so tol mol ke hisab se they may just have in one month they may have $5000 another month $40000 another month 10 but they are not yeah. having a payroll there is no payroll there is no federal taxes being paid so these people have fallen through the cracks and 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 so this is a very uneven way that the us government is trying to put the money back in the hands of those who have been employed who been forcibly shut down and staying at home and so on and so forth so it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out because today i just saw a snap poll biden is comfortably beating trump and i can tell you trump it's not that the trump is not trying hard he's trying yeah. every trick in the book to try you and show this idea that you can possibly whip you know yes 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 whip everything i mean he's he's turned uh, uh, looked under every rock he possibly can to see what can yeah. be done and and still things are not you know moving but um, be that as it may i think this is in us the demand is also slowly falling down for example the liquor store the grocery stores those are all open but i can see the traffic has now come down to a trickle reason is initially people were having this panic buy right everybody yeah, were yeah. running out of paper towels you know uh, you know essential stuff that they thought that they might not get their hands on a lot of people have bought excess of that and the shops yeah, won't take it back yeah. right so so you you have all these challenges in front of you 
and i am not sure how the one good thing about india and indians we don't waste anything we try to stretch it to the last possible moment yeah, and that that true. that inherent mentality of saving will actually come in helpful that means you can also stretch your savings to the yeah. last possible moment however yeah, about hardship yes you know? yes yes so so it what i i'm finding it strange is that those who are still having a job who are employed why can't the government give uh, this year's personal income tax holiday because i think the rating agencies will not be hard, ju harshly judging any country based on the covid right. response I, you know, like i take your point that you know it, the, the rating agencies will think twice about you know about yeah. downgrading you know a country right now because everybody is in bad trouble so it's not just india right but, you know the thing that i you know the you know we get into a debt trap ourselves look at it this way the government of india is borrowing at 6% and by the time they keep borrowing the rates may even go up to 6 and a half so borrowing at 6 and a half and your nominal gdp could actually be contracting at 6% so you're getting very deep into a debt trap i mean as i said you know we'll get to 80% of gdp this year itself and and there is a question mark over calendar 21 as well but you know i'll tell you as i said i don't think this is the last stimulus because when you have companies shutting down you know when you have large when you have crores of people getting jobless so i think what the government has done is they put out this thing they're going to see how it goes you know also uh, one thing that none of us are paying attention to is the cost of looking at at you know dealing with this uh, corona virus now i think that the cost of dealing with this corona virus could be anywhere between half to 1% of gdp yes yes so because uh, you know i mean india's testing is woefully inadequate we don't have beds we are asking for ventilators at some point sooner rather than later you're going to start having to pay the bills you know then the you know one thing which is very odd the finance minister announced you know as a great favor actually tells you how business is run by the government she says as a great favor i mean she said it as a favor that we're going to actually refund all the money that we owe you guys so the psus will owe will refund will start paying their bills on time i will give back the tax refunds now that was estimated you know from 4 or 5 months ago by niti ayog as 5 lakh crores wow so, so, you it, know, so, is so that you also know, being i'm sorry go ahead you finish your thought sorry so, yeah. I mean, she not added that up to the 21 lakh crore of stimulus but i'm just saying that you know if the government has to pay out 25 you know 5 lakh crore more this year that's another deficit which you got to keep in mind you know yes. i mean in the sense that they've got used to keeping people's money for 6 months it had just become the habit so you starved a company of funds you know so i mean i i i think we we uh, there could be another package and i'll give you you know some instances where i think the money could come from so for example we have this really um, i think it's a scam we have a workers insurance scheme called esic employee state insurance corporation right basically they take about 4% of your of your salary you know to provide health insurance and they have esic hospitals and stuff like that now when where is most insurance company health insurance company they have a payout ratio of about 95 to 98% the esic has a payout ratio of 35 to 40% oh wow it has a surplus of 65000 crore rupees right now that's almost that's about almost 10 billion dollars of right. surplus they have right so you know i, I uh, would not be surprised if at some point the government just said that everybody who's contributed to esic uh, gets x amount of money back i mean i think the government is also trying to keep its powder dry because a as i said we don't know uh, you know how much more we'll need you don't know how much this pandemic is going to cost sometimes these moves work so you know maybe this liquidity actually starts working you know maybe the fact that you're telling people that uh, you know we'll uh, we'll give you forbearance on your bad loans so you know i think they're just trying to they are basically doing what the chinese said you know crossing the river by feeling by feeding the pebbles So I don't think 20 lakh crores is the or 21 lakh crores is the end of it, but I think it's a substantial amount because the government is essentially broke. And if you ask me now, the real challenge for the prime minister, as I said, he's failed to deliver to a large extent in the last six years. But he needs to get the uh, the working environment, the ease of doing business. He needs to get that fixed. You know, when it comes to you know, I'll give you a simple thing like you know, when we're when we're working from home. the two areas or the three or four things that you think will boom will be everybody will want top class computers right you want top class you know wifi broadband and things like that 
So you, the telecom sector should actually boom right now. The telecom sector in India, apart from Reliance Geo, is on the verge of collapse. Because, you know, we've discussed this before in the past that government levies are so rapacious, you've killed right. the sector. Now, you know, if, if the prime minister could somehow just get over the inertia or whatever pressure he feels and change and slash those levies, I can see a lot of, you know, money coming into the telecom sector. And if money comes, the jobs created, you know, it, it creates a certain cycle of its own. Now, his, argument is, sorry, yeah. his argument is that, you know, I cannot, uh, you know, uh, slash the levies of the telecom sector because, you know, it will be seen as Sud Bhut Kesarkar. But, you know, any pragmatic guy knows that he's increased the levies so much that his revenues are actually falling. In rupees crore, he's getting less money. Correct. So it's actually a no-brainer. And I can't understand why somebody of the obvious caliber of, uh, you know, the prime, of prime Minister Narendra Modi shouldn't be doing this. I mean, it, some of these things are actually quite inexplicable. Yes, I think I, and you're right, I am looking at telecom as a part of infrastructure. The reason I say it is infrastructure is because a lot of things that we used to do by going to an office, sitting in a desk and doing it, a lot of that stuff can be done from the comfort of your home, but you need great connectivity. You need 100% electricity, you need great connectivity, and you need a really good computer. Now, these are all one-time investments. Connectivity is a one-time investment. Computer is a one-time investment. And for electricity, you will pay what you consume. So this is something that really, really needs to be taken at uh, on, on a war footing because I think tier two, tier three cities are, are the ones that can really, really, you know, take advantage of this new infrastructure availability. By the way, Sunil, I've been working with people in tier three, even tier four cities where I would think that the town consists of two big streets and that's about it but they have connectivity. They seem to have had people who have traveled abroad and come back and they're staying with their parents or what have you. But the quality of output is extremely good. Extremely fact, good. You know, yeah, absolutely. In fact, you know, uh, the, 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 I mean, you know, I, I know that I'm dodging your question of how do you get out of this mess because it's easier to focus on the long term. Yeah. <clears throat> but you know, if, you know, I think India has such great opportunities which have finally come about due to this Corona. So just yesterday, the government said that the top 100 or the top 1000, I forget the exact number, the top 100 or the top 1000 universities in India will be allowed to offer online courses. It is yes. mind blowing, but yes. up till now we didn't allow it. So, you know, so we were using Coursera and, you know, looking at Harvard courses, but you couldn't get a course from MIT, from IIT. You could do MIT, but not IIT. Correct. So, Correct. You know, now, for example, we have a very poor doctor, doctor you know, population ratio here. So the government has now finally eased the rules on, you know, on telemedicine. Now, frankly, you know, the, 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 this is a low hanging fruit, the productivity gains from telemedicine, from long distance education, they're huge. So, you know, I mean, India can actually do a lot of things if the prime minister fixes a few things. What I'm saying is that the, the medium term is quite hopeful. You know, if you're able to fix the problems uh, of execution, which we're finding on the ground today. So I don't know whether you had a chance to read my column today, but you know what I've talked about. I did. I did read the whole thing. It's very, very well written, Sunil. So, you know, the whole thing was that, you know, you want to attract people from China. And when, when you're not looking after Indian businesses, who's going to want to invest here? But, you know, uh, hopefully the prime minister has learned the lesson. You know, they have done a lot of progressive, I mean, not a lot, but by their standard, they've done quite a few progressive things uh, in the last few days. You know, I think agriculture in India. So we were we were stifling agriculture by a 55 or 60 year old, uh, you know, Essential Commodities Act. And, you know, this government has come, they've defanged the Essential Commodities Act. We actually wouldn't allow, let's say a farmer produces rice in Haryana. And if the price in Punjab is higher, he actually couldn't, you know, take a truck and cross the, or, a, or a tractor and cross the border. So we've changed that. We wouldn't allow, let's say a Walmart or, you know, a Reliance Fresh to enter into a long-term contract with the farmer and say, okay, you know, I'm going to buy your potatoes after the harvest and I'm going to pay you, you know, eight rupees per kilo. So we wouldn't allow that. So, you know, now contract farming has been allowed. They, so they have done a few things. I mean, the, the, the question is, could they have done them six years ago? The answer is they could have been done 60 years ago. As our saying goes, so I think, you know, we need to, 
uh, forget about the you know what the, the mistakes of the past and just say okay can we do it now let's forget about why you didn't do it who didn't do it let's just do it and move on yes and and uh, sunil you br- you brought up a very interesting point in one of my conversations with mohandas pai who is one of the founders of akshay patra he said that one consistent demand and request they get from all over india wherever they have these kitchen facilities right people say just give us the rice that you have filtered and kept they are willing to pay for it in fact they are even willing to pay a little bit more premium for it because uh-huh. they see that their automation machines automated machines in akshay patra they are able to sift the grain from the chaff so to say stones from yeah. the rice right yeah, yeah. and they say please give us this so so you you have so many challenges and and these things all can be fixed right you know yeah. never let a crisis go waste in my absolutely. opinion right absolutely. fix the infrastructure like for example if i'm including telecom in this give them a tax holiday try to see how quickly you can bring high speed internet into every household try and make sure that everybody has 100% electricity and and just watch sit back and watch people you know, will figure I'll, out I'll, I'll give you an example like you know right now it's you know it's amazing now you know anil agarwal has been saying for for a long time that you know china has the least amount of bauxite in the world but china produces the most aluminum in the world we have the <laughs> most bauxite but we don't produce enough aluminum right so, and he talked about how you know you can generate crores of jobs you know he compares western australia you know which apparently has a geological structure which is quite similar to some parts of india so he said you know you're just sitting on minerals and you're doing nothing with it so he's been talking about how much investment can come in and how many jobs can get created and stuff like that so yesterday i mean so as part of this five day marathon the finance minister said okay i'm going to you know ease some of the problems when it comes to mining so you know one very simple thing is that we would give somebody a prospecting license so okay go look for you know uh, bauxite here but once we gave them a prospect a, a prospecting license we never actually gave them a mining license so we said okay you find the you find the bauxite then come and tell the world about where the bauxite is draw a map give us all the details we'll have an auction and then you can participate in that auction which is really you know quite mindless so the finance minister announced that okay i'm going to give you one single license you can prospect if you find something you develop it makes a lot of sense yes yes But, you know she forgot the most important thing which is that on average indian levies are about 50 to 60% higher than those in south africa or western australia now you know you can have very high levies you can feel very good about the fact that you've got high levies and therefore you're not allowing people to take away india's wealth but with those levies people are not coming yes so why not lower the levies allow people to come get some part of that wealth you know i think 30% of our non of our import bill if you exclude oil 30% of that is other minerals So it is a boom situation, but we didn't do it. Let me ask you a question from out of left field, Sunil. You know, we, before we open and we have blinked and open our eyes, the rupee has again fallen against the dollar, and now it is now at seventy five, seventy six. Not long ago, it was at sixty eight, sixty nine. There is no yeah. reason I cannot explain when imports are down and exports are down why the rupee keeps you know drooping and dropping further. why cannot the government now is a good time because now is a crisis why can't the government say i'm going to peg it at 50 for the next 5 years and then i'm going to let it appreciate after that to say maybe 30 in the next 10 years the reason i'm saying these numbers is once the foreign companies know that this is going to be india's exchange rate for the next 5 years and more they can do it he's only for one year into his second term and if this this takes hold two things happen one is that uh, you are import in terms of like crude you are already getting a dividend because the crude price is low but the import bill also will go down the indirect cost of uh, you know taking transporting from x to y that goes down and and don't look at the economic model don't look at i need to have so much inflation every year because otherwise keynesian models falls out of the way all that can go out the window all i am trying to say is that you are getting less money but if you also spend far far less than what you used to spend that's a good feeling yeah but i don't i don't think that you know that india has the ability to you know manage and say that okay we will we'll have it will be 50 rupees to the dollar you know that's a very very different ball game we can have a larger discussion actually that's a discussion that you have 
you should have with, with serious economists and you know and currency managers and stuff like that. I don't think that it is possible to actually peg the rupee at a certain rate. And more important, you know, let's put it this way: if the rupee is at 75 or it reaches 80, that actually helps the local industry a lot because there's a lot of import substitution that you'll start having here. So people are going to say, do I really need to buy this from America? Do I need to buy this from Europe? Let me look at an Indian alternative. So I don't think a rupee at 75 or 80. In fact, you know, a lot of people have been arguing for a long time that the rupee has always been overvalued. Now, we've got a particular problem right now that you've got a supply problem in India that your supply chain has got disrupted and you've got the global you know, market, which is not which is, which is degrowing, which is contracting. But, you know, the rupee at 75 has been sort of, you know, uh, every exporter's wet dream because you know you can suddenly export a lot more and you know your, your goods are cheaper so you know you have a lot more potential you know um, I have a small dis disagreement with this hmm. India is not a uh, India's currency is not convertible it says it is using a basket of currencies right now that model has gone for a walk I mean U US has printed 10 trillion dollars US right. is a reserve currency of the world. The US can do whatever it wants. You know, right. our problem is to compare ourselves with the US. Everybody else is going to follow suit. No, no, I'm just, hear me out. Yeah. Everybody else is also going to follow suit. So your basket itself has no meaning anymore. You're not, you're not accounting for the fact that everybody else is chapa morrowing notes and you don't want to do that. You don't do it, you do it too. Nothing wrong I with that. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not ducking this conversation. I just really don't know enough. I think that we should, you know, you should actually get some serious economists and currency guys in on this. Because, but in, intuitively, I just don't feel that we can, you know, we can pull it off. But, you know, uh, you should have that discussion with some people. You know, maybe if, if you can have three or four people together, if you can host them, I'd like to be part of that so I can hear what's going on. Yeah, so I just sorry, want to do it on. yeah. So, sorry, one last parting thought on this one. I have worked and I've seen many of the companies that have made money outsourcing labor, Infosys of the world, Wipro, TCS, LNT, fully 30% is on the bench at any given time. Okay. And that 30% is never used to make a new product, new concept, new design, new anything. For all its glorious exist existence, Infosys has one product called Finacle. And, yeah. and depending on who you talk to, you get a different response about how good that software is. Yeah. Right. And and, and, don't, talk to the and don't, talk, don't talk to people in India using GST. That's <laughs> why, you know, yes, 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 yes. So my, my point in all this is these guys are there's They have a lot of sloth. They can actually make their uh, things tighten their act. It's a think about uh, China, right? They pegged it at 6.3 or something like that for the longest time. Only now it has come to seven. But look at it, for 30 years, they could do it. How is it that they could do it? And how is it that India as a comparable current uh, economy, we just don't you know, seem to pay attention to the, you may be helping exporters, but every rupee that, you know, the, uh, the it, it slides against the dollar, that is being borne by everyone, the whole country, because it's 130, you know, million, million or whatever, you know, 130 crores, you don't see it. But it is 10 paisa here, 10 paisa there, so on and so forth. No, I, I, I know what you're saying. I mean, I, I to use an American expression, I hear you. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, to, to, to get, you know, to take on your point about Infosys, I think one very encouraging thing that we've seen in this, uh, in this Corona episode is really the amount of Indian innovation that has been done. So, you know, today I was reading a story, uh, a piece about how, you know, two companies, Reliance was one of them. They've reduced the cost of the swab to, you know, to take the uh, the, the sample for the from the throat to right. a tenth. Hmm. You know, ventilators are being produced, you know, uh, at cost. I mean, that cost lakhs as opposed to, you know, figures of crores earlier on. So there's been massive innovation that's taken place. So I think, you know, the, the great thing is that, I mean, who would have thought that all of us, uh, you know, would be working out of home. There are people, you know, I run an entire newspaper uh, where... We don't have a single person. Of course, there's a printing press that's different. But among the non-printing press and the pre-printing, there's not a single person who goes to the office. Yes, so they're, they're just amazing. I, I tip my hat to you because I see the e-print e, e versions. Excellent. Yeah. The quality hasn't changed a bit. So, and so, you know, I think we've done a lot of innovation in India. And the important thing, which is why, you know, in fact, Mohandas Pai will tell you so much more about it because he's a real frustrated guy. 
because you know he sees what all can be done and then he sees you know how at every step of the way the government is putting some you know hindrance or the other you're telling a guy that okay you know you got x amount of money from let's say google invested 100 million dollars in your company so please pay tax on 100 million dollars i mean this is this is you know why should you pay tax on that 100 million dollars yes you that know? is pure investment that should not be touched for tax purposes they're, yeah. they're, they're taxing almost anything they can i mean it is the you know this is mr modi's real challenge if he can get this damn bureaucracy to you know if he can rein in the bureaucracy i mean i don't know how he's going to do it but uh, that's a real challenge you know the, the 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 amazing thing is that no matter what plan he does absolutely did you no read matter, his book yes 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 no matter what he does is uh, you know the bureaucracy put some rider or the other to finish off the plan i mean i have disagreements with your with your book in the sense that there are a lot of people who you have sort of i mean you've done it in a fictional manner but you sort of painted them as agents of 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 the isi and i don't know whether you got enough proof to you know to actually make that case but it is plausible so you know it's right that's what makes it frightening no 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 the why i asked you this thing was because towards the end i was trying to suggest new ways to try and uh, generate more income and and i said you know if you abolish personal income tax then there're going to be a whole bunch of income tax officials who are going to have no job so i yeah. said you know let them go and get the money back from the tax havens that is an un- earn that and bring it back after all they know how people were you know they were on one side watching all these people steal they should be able to get it back and give them 3% on the cut no problem in that i have a slightly different view from you on that i'm not too sure how much money is there in the tax haven you see i'm just assuming that the guy who put his money in the tax haven is a smart guy you know he's not some idiot so if a smart guy you know put his money in a tax haven and he saw let's say the way the stock market was booming or he saw the way the you know property markets were booming or just you know even the 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 bank fd rate in india versus what you were getting in those tax havens the guy is probably losing a lot of money by keeping his money there so i think a lot of this would have come back into the system you know so it could be it could be funding your real estate it could be in your stock market it could be lots of other places but i'd be very surprised if people kept the chunk of their black money i mean you'll keep a certain amount for one generation two generation three generations you know so you'll keep you know five houses in hampstead will be you know funded out of something in the swiss bank but beyond that you say listen let me get the money let me get my money to work see the guy the banya who got his money abroad is not an idiot he is smarter than you and i so <laughs> you know uh, why am i keeping my money there and you know just giving to the swiss so i suspect a lot of the money has come back but uh, i don't know <laughs> True, truth is this, uh, Sunil, and I have no proof when I'm saying this statement. Truth is this: a lot of property, real estate, has been purchased in the United States itself using Indian money. Yeah, and, so I think it's a lot. Of, it's a lot, but I'm just saying that the guy who purchased that real estate, this is probably a small fraction of the black money that he's got. That's all I'm be, saying. Could I'm be, saying. could be, could could be, could be. One one very famous politician wanted to capitalize his company out of. Britain, and the capitalization amount was sixty billion pounds. At that wow. time, at that time, it was one point five uh, pound, one point four pounds to a uh, one point four dollars to a pound. That was hundred billion dollars. That person wanted to capitalize, raise capital of hundred billion dollars. I have the article. Anyone uh, interested, you can go and look at it and see who was it that was trying to do this thing. So the boon boon se banta hai sagar. I'm sorry to say this thing. I know you're getting late. So, over a period of time, how many politicians have actually retired from India? Tell me. Everybody only yeah. dies. Nobody ever yeah. retires, right? That's Why true. do they do that? Because they have got all these tentacles spread everywhere. Deals here, yeah, deals yeah. there. Absolutely. Agreement here, agreement there. You, you, you touch this guy. There'll be a television channel somewhere. You want a sugar cooperative? You want something? I mean, it's, these guys just have their money everywhere. Which is why I said the money is in India. You know. <laughs> so if somebody is trying to set up a television channel of which Sunil Jain is the editor, then you know that money is in India. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's a good question. I think uh, some reality has to come out. Um, my guess is that there is a sub- substantial amount. However, you you are right. It's only a few. See, there are two types of money. And they'll finish up. The politicians don't bring it back unless they want to just go and buy like real estate. 
but yeah. i think that train has run its course the reason i say that is look at the average time it takes for the high end real estate to sell today 42 yeah, months 48 yeah. months and they're just letting it yeah they're just letting it sit there because it's not something that there is no bank loan that they need to pay as an emi yeah. for that right yeah. so other than that other than that i don't think there is a lot of money here so let's try to separate the two politicians ill gotten money versus yeah bureaucrats uh, i mean uh, businessmen's money businessmen make money on like import uh, over invoicing imports under invoicing exports but even there there's a cut that goes to the politician too there's a cut that goes oh. to the babu yeah. right so so, it's a, so so there is this is a complex web we created it over a long time and and we just have to bite the bullet that's why i said in, i asked you to write the book because i'm saying start using blockchain today plan because then what happens at least you know where the money is going yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> so thank you so much sunil we we covered you. a whole yeah whole swath of topics but i would like to uh, invite you back in about 2 to 3 weeks time when you feel the time is appropriate and we can again touch this thing because by the time you'll start seeing some activity on the ground sure. and and, and how, how things are playing right yeah, yeah Th thank perfect Yeah, Have thank you so day. much Sunil. Yeah, thank you yeah, so much. Bye-bye. Hi everyone. In the current scenario with the spread of COVID-19, the printed books are on the verge of becoming outdated and e-books are becoming the mainstream way of reading. You can now read our e-book Who Painted My Money White comfortably on the Kindle app on your phone or a tab. So now, I'm going to show you how to download kindle on your phone firstly open play store or app store depending upon your phone we are following play store process though the process is similar for both android and ios in the search bar type amazon kindle tap the first result to open the application page and press install once installed press open to start the application Use your credentials to log in. If you were already logged into an Amazon account, then you will directly reach the welcome page for the app. Tap on Start Reading, and then tap on Get Started. Now, in the search bar, type the book name or the author name, and it will show you the relevant results. Tap on the book, and then tap on Read for Free. iPhone users. can buy the book at a discounted price of just rupees 199 you get a 30 days trial for the app on android tap on the button on the next screen press continue to reach the payment page after entering your payment details click on place your order once the process is complete it will show a message saying we are setting up your membership Pressing the cross on the top right corner of the screen will take you back to the book results page. Tap on the book and then tap on Read for Free. It will open a new page. Here you can follow the author and then tap on Read Now. It will now open the e-book and you can happily enjoy reading it.